Welcome to Watch This Space. My name is Dr. Stuart Gray. Today we'll be taking a look at all of the SpaceX launches to date and seeing how much space debris they have created. SpaceX have, without doubt, revolutionized the space industry and are active in launching private spacecraft as well as resupplying the International Space Station. To date, SpaceX has carried out 28 launches, with roughly half of these to low Earth orbit or LEO. These LEO launches include NASA crew resupply missions to the International Space Station. We can see how much debris these missions created by looking at the tracking data provided by the US Joint Space Operations Center, or JSPOC, which I've visualized here. For example, let's look at CRS-1, launched October 8, 2012. All of the objects associated with this launch are highlighted in yellow. All of the other objects are pieces of debris currently being tracked by JSPOC. The mission of CRS-1 was to resupply and then remove waste from the ISS before safely deorbiting, that is, burning up in the Earth's atmosphere. The CRS module itself is in orbit for 20 days, attached to the ISS, which has an altitude of roughly 400 kilometers. We can also see a number of other objects associated with this launch. This type of debris is very common and is usually created as the stages of the rocket separate or fairings are discarded and includes the spent second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket. The good news is that these pieces of debris only last a few days in orbit. That is because they have a very low altitude and are thus slowed down by the very thin upper atmosphere. This causes them to lose altitude and then burn up. All of the other CRS launches follow the same pattern with the CRS spacecraft itself staying in orbit for 20 to 30 days, along with the creation of a small number of pieces of space debris that are relatively short-lived. These objects are in the extremely busy LEO environment, but their short orbital lifetime means that they have a very small chance of collision with other objects. The other half of the SpaceX launches to date have been commercial missions to the much higher altitudes. The majority of these missions have been communication satellites to geostationary orbit, or GEO, with an altitude of 35,786 kilometers. We can see the geostationary ring here. At this altitude, the spacecraft's orbit keeps it above the same point on the Earth's surface as it turns, making it ideal for communications, but they all needed help to get to this orbit. The second stage of the Falcon 9 has to do a lot more work in order to push the spacecraft into what is called a geostationary transfer orbit, or GTO. This means that once it is finished propelling the spacecraft, the second stage is in a highly elliptical orbit that takes it high above the atmosphere before coming in much lower on its closest approach. This gives these rocket bodies an orbital lifetime ranging from hundreds of days to a number of years. This type of rocket body debris is inevitable when launching spacecraft to higher orbits, and even though SpaceX so far have been a good citizen when it comes to creating space debris, it has still put 18 rocket bodies into Earth's orbit. Eight of these have deorbited, and 10 of them are still in orbit. To put this in perspective though, these 10 rocket bodies are just 10 of approximately 20,000 trackable objects in Earth's orbit, some of which have been in orbit since the 1950s. These include rocket bodies, defunct satellites, and debris caused by collisions. SpaceX is responsible for a very small number of pieces of space debris due to its launches to date, but it will be interesting to see if this continues as they move forward with their plans for launching a very large constellations of satellites in the future. That's it for this episode of Watch This Space. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share and subscribe, and please ask any questions in the comments.